Hello everybody, this is Pastor Graham Field again from Kingsway Church in Wombourne. Delighted to be with you again today. And we've come to the next study in the amazing Gospel of John. Today's topic is earthly things and heavenly things. And we are considering the story we know as the interview with Nicodemus. <clears throat> And we're going to begin by reading from John chapter 2, verse 24, to chapter 3, verse 21. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all men. He did not need man's testimony about man, for he knew what was in a man. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know. We testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. May God bless to us the reading of his word today. John has selected and recorded for us several interviews or encounters with individuals or groups. In these encounters there are no miracles, but a conversation which reveals to us more about who Jesus is. This is the first of those encounters that we have just read. But please remember we must read this and understand this in the light of chapter 20 verse 30 to 31 the purpose for which John recorded it and selected it 
that these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So therefore, this is primarily not a story about Nicodemus, but a story about Jesus. It begins with the understanding that Jesus knew what was in the hearts of men. He had encountered a group of people that appreciated his miraculous signs, but made no steps to believe in him as the Son of God. Now he encounters Nicodemus and immediately recognizes not only someone who appreciates the miraculous signs, but also has a sincere heart. It teaches us that Jesus will always be available to the person who approaches him in sincerity of heart. Jesus showed that he was prepared to dispense the right to become a child of God to all who would believe and approach him in sincerity. Nicodemus, Nicodemus came with theological questions. Jesus came to transform lives. Nicodemus came from the Pharisees, the guardians of the law of Moses. Jesus came down from heaven to establish the kingdom of God in the hearts of men and women. I think the key to understanding the conversation is in verses 10, 11 and 12. Jesus had said, very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. And then he continued, I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? For no one has ever gone into heaven except the Son of Man who came down from heaven. Jesus was saying, in other words, I have come on behalf of the Father and the Holy Spirit to tell you what we know and what we have seen. What Jesus is saying is this, I have told you about heavenly things with earthly examples and you have not yet come to believe. How then will you believe if I tell you of heavenly things without earthly examples. Jesus brought a revelation about how lives could be transformed and he illustrated it by talking about natural birth and then rebirth and the mystery of the wind. Jesus spoke about how lives can be dis transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit from heaven, who, like the wind, energizes the one who believes into understanding and experiencing heavenly things. This encounter with the Holy Spirit has no precedent or antecedent. You can't tell where it came from or where it goes to. It just encounters the heart of a man. This encounter with the Holy Spirit does not come about by learning or maintaining tradition. To be born anew is to be born from above through an encounter with God. You can only understand heavenly things without earthly examples once you have encountered the Holy Spirit. Such an encounter takes one naturally born and makes this person spiritually reborn. One final earthly example of heavenly things is in verse 15. 
Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, that's an earthly thing, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. That's a heavenly thing. This refers to a miracle in the Old Testament. In order to stop a plague brought about by snakes, God told Moses to impale the image of a snake on a high pole. Whoever looked up to the image on the pole and maintained their gaze on its meaning would be healed of the plague. In the same way, in the same way, the Son of Man must be lifted up. The lifting up of the serpent image was to indicate to the people the answer to their dilemma had come from heaven. God had sent the deliverance from the plague of snakes. The lifting up of the Son of Man was to indicate the same thing, that the answer to the sin of man had come from heaven. It was a gift from God. Now let's put this together. Jesus, the Son of God, the Word from the beginning, the light of the world, full of grace and truth, the overcomer of darkness, the only one to come from heaven to earth, is to be seen as one impaled upon a stake. Jesus shared with the sincere heart of Nicodemus something no one else had ever seen before because it was a heavenly thing. Belief in Jesus was more than acknowledging he was a man sent from God, which is where Nicodemus began. It was more than seeing him as a great prophet or worker of miracles. The belief that would take hold of a person's life and transform it so that it was like he had been born all over again <coughs> was to grasp that the Son of God had come to be an atoning sacrifice for the sin of all who would believe, so that they would be free to enter the kingdom of God and to enjoy the gift of heavenly things which would secure an everlasting relationship with God. Now here the conversation with Nicodemus comes to an end. He fades away for a time, but when he sees with his own eyes what Jesus had described, that is Jesus impaled upon the cross, Nicodemus steps forward and helps bury the body of Jesus. We find that in chapter 19, verse 39. Now from verse 16 onwards, the narrator explains the following. This is, the, this is how God showed his love for the world and the people in it. He gave his only son. He did not come to condemn the world. He sent the light so that people would understand the enormity of their sin, repent from it and lift their eyes to God's gift of salvation. We have seen Jesus as the Lord over human shortcomings, over space, time and human misfortune, quantity, the natural world and death. But this is a completely different revelation. And it's put so beautifully in the prophecy of Isaiah. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all.
My dear friend, today that is a heavenly thing. That is a heavenly thing. That is a sacred vision of Jesus as the Saviour of the world, shared in this encounter with the man Nicodemus. However, there remains the absolute critical thing. Even though God did all this, there remains those who will still perish. Those who will still be condemned and will not receive everlasting life. Being naturally born does not make one a child of God. The key word is believe. For it is through believing that we have life in his name. And verse 36 of chapter 3 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. The fact that God loved the world didn't save anyone. It's when people believed that God so loved the world that salvation came about through believing in his name and that is the critical thing my dear friend today to believe who Jesus is may God bless you may God be with you and those that you love and I look forward to you joining with me in our next study in the wonderful gospel of John thank you and God bless you amen